Hello guys, um, my name is Kyle Anderson, but you guys may know me better as uh, I Fly Whirlybirds. Uh, I think this is the first time um, you've ever heard my voice or seen my face, but well, here I am. Now, today I'm going to review the uh, Badger Model 18011 air compressor because uh, I just bought this in Las Vegas this weekend. Um, my brother had a basketball tournament there, so I was down there. Um, I, I couldn't find any reviews online for it, so I figured I might as well show you guys. Um, it is a diaphragm compressor, which means there's a diaphragm in here that goes up and down and produces an airflow, as opposed to, I think it's a piston in normal air compressors. Um, the trade-off is that you get pulsations at very low PSI, but once you get it back up to high PSI, it's fine, it's totally fine, it works like a treat. I mean, it's it's awesome. But I only paid $50 for this. Now, online, some of these go for upwards of $200. Um, if I paid $200 for this, there was probably a weapon to my head. Uh, I would not pay $200 for this. I paid $50, and I'm having a hard time justifying that, but it is, I'm, I mean, it, it's not as bad as I make it sound. It's just, it's, uh, it doesn't have a toggle switch. It, let's see, it doesn't have a switch to go on or off. It's an auto shut off, which means that it's, uh, hold on, that it turns off when, um, the air is pressurized when you're when you depress the trigger on your airbrush um, it turns on when you uh, take it off it turns off and I'll show you it's not that loud I don't know how loud other air compressors are but we'll see I had to make this this is a modified light switch but here we go As you can see, it's uh, it's fairly loud. I mean, I have it down in a, in a nook right down in there with uh, with towels on the wall, uh, and it it. I mean, well, it it adds to the noise uh, absorption, but it's not perfect. But I only use this on for weathering jobs. Um, I was thinking about doing all my modeling work in here, but I decided against it because um, I don't have a spray booth, and water-based paints are not the best. So. Um, I'm continuing to use enamels. I'm, a, I'm an enamel guy uh, and a lacquer guy, but <clears throat> this regulator up here, you might notice, is totally different than regular regulators. Uh, it is, I don't even know what it's called, but it's got a little uh, screw and a vent. So that means that no matter what, this air compressor will always be pushing the same amount of air. It's just getting out of this little hole right here. Um, and when it's closed, it releases all the pressure in, inside the hose. Now what I was talking about the pulsation is that low PSI, when more air is coming out of here than is going into the hole, or the hose, uh, it pulsates, but not very noticeably. Um, if you use it for a long time, it does get fairly hot, um, but I haven't had any problem with it catching fire or anything, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, I also bought another thing while I was in Vegas, and that is this. Armor modeling by John Prigent. I don't think I pronounced that right, but I don't care. This is probably one of the best modeling um, related purchases I've ever made. I was in the hobby store and uh, whenever I go into a hobby store I sweat because I absolutely love it. It's my favorite place to be, um, however depressing that may be. But I had a kit in my hand, it was the um, Dragon King Tiger Imperial Edition uh, with a red box and I've never seen it before. And I thought that was very rare, so I was like, I must get this. But it was either get that kit or get the air compressor, so it was an obvious choice. Um, but I'm very glad that I bought this because I told myself that I would rather have the experience and knowledge to do models correctly, armor models especially, than have more kits that I can just screw up. So I bought this. Um, it is very, very, very good at um, explaining the... Uh, the art of, well, the art of tank modeling. Um, it's got very, very detailed color photos. Um, this guy, he's been building models for 60 years. Uh, his first model was a cardboard Matilda tank that he made out of a cereal box. Um, it's got basics for dioramas, um, photo etches, white metal resin. Um, I mean, you name it, if it has to do with armor, he, he has it in here. This is actually a diagram from uh, AFE plans. Uh, I can't remember who, who wrote that, but it's a diagram. Um, 
I would totally recommend this book to any treadheads. Um, it actually, it also has good tips for um, aircraft modelers too, but it doesn't exactly say it towards aircraft modelers, but the, the same general principle applies. Um, so, I mean, if you come across this book and you have the opportunity to get it, I would totally get it. Um, he makes another book about World War II modeling, World War II tanks, I should say. Uh, that's just, that is also very good. This was $40. Uh, it's a bit steep for a book, but you know, I'm totally willing to pay it. Uh, it, it. It has totally changed my view of armor modeling. Um, I take much more care in details now. Um, as, as of right now, I'm working on my Academy um, 37 or 35th scale M7 Priest. This is the 105 millimeter howitzer. Um, I never would have filled these these uh, ejection pin marks before, but after reading that, I was just like, oh, I, I think I should do that. And uh, it's it's totally changed my outlook on modeling. But um, this is probably going to be the first of many videos because I realized that uh, videos are a much more efficient way of conveying information. Well, for me at least. But um, we'll see. This is for the guys at swaneysmodels.com. Um, so, I mean, that's it.